in the last three lessons, we have built the two-tier X509 PKI as sketched in the drawing on the left side of this slide. At the top, we have a common root CA that itself has certified the key pair of two issuing CAs, where the issuing CA1 is the issuing CA issuing certificates to Alice, and where the issuing CA2 is the issuing CA issuing certificates to Bob. The issuing CA1 then indeed issued a certificate to Alice for a key pair that can be used to create digital signatures, and the issuing CA2 issued a certificate to Bob for a key pair that can be used to encrypt other cryptographic keys. With these certificates issued, the stage is set for various applications, but the application that we are interested in for this course is the implementation of a signed and encrypt approach to secure emails. The secured email will be sent from Alice to Bob, and for this, it's Alice that needs to sign the email with her private digital signature creation key, and it's also Alice that then needs to encrypt the signed email with the public encryption key of Bob. Given that Alice is in possession of her private key for creating digital signatures, Alice is required to obtain the encryption certificate of Bob, which she can, for example, do by either meeting up with Bob in person or by fetching the encryption certificate of Bob from the public repository of certificates maintained by the PKI. In order to validate the authenticity of the encryption key before using it, Alice then needs to validate the X509 encryption certificate of Bob according to the X509 certificate chain algorithm as explained in a previous lesson. If the validation of the encryption certificate of Bob is successful, Alice is then good to go ahead with securing the email by signing and then encrypting the email and to send this secured email to Bob. Bob as the receiver of the sign then encrypted email, then first needs to peel off the outer encryption layer by making use of his private decryption key and to then verify the digital signature based on the public digital signature verification key of Alice. As Bob is in possession of his own private decryption key, the decryption is easy for Bob, but to verify the digital signature, Bob first needs to obtain the signature certificate of Alice, which he may fetch, for example, from the public registry of certificates as maintained by the PKI. Before Bob uses the certificate of Alice, Bob as well needs to validate the authenticity of the digital signature verification key, and this is again just Bob validating the obtained certificate based on the X509 certificate chain algorithm as explained in a previous lesson. If the validation of the signature certificate of Alice is successful, Bob is then good to take the key contained in the certificate to validate the digital signature provided on the email received from Alice. If the validation of the digital signature of the email succeeds, Bob can then conclude that the email was indeed sent by Alice.